first bite. I don't know what we'll do if this tree falls and crushes the earth. Okay, so it's a stunning, stunning day today. Um, it has been raining for like a week and a half straight. It's been difficult and frustrating. We are expecting to have a sunny day for a week and we are so excited. Definitely taking advantage of it. Jake is doing laundry and we are hang drying it everywhere. <laughs> and I'm in here working in the garden with these two beds. Um, we haven't planted anything in them yet, except for this one we have some onions and some chamomile. But uh, we added um, a second layer of wood. Um, so these two beds are a little bit higher because we're gonna be planting more deep root plants. So we added more soil in here last night and then I just mixed in some peat moss. Now they're ready to go and now we get a plant, which is my favorite part.
Okay, you're planting our little celery. Yeah. It looks so cute. It's super cute. Can you go grow? How's my hair? Looks good. Yeah, I think it'll grow. Actually, I think it will. Yeah. And then every season that we replant its seeds, then it'll be more acclimated for this area. All right. And then what are you gonna do with all this area? I'm gonna do beets with a little bit of herbs and stuff, so. Cool. Locally grown chives and chamomile that a friend in one of the towns nearby gifted us when we ran into them on the boat the other day. Yeah, they're really sweet. Yeah. Is I'll put like two, because I know that beets always take pretty good. Mm -hmm. So I think that I can do, I'm picturing the end plant. And the end plant is about this tall and this wide. So I'm picturing one here, one here would be good. So I'm gonna go kind of close to the edge here. I'm gonna go two there. And then what I do is I just go about eight inches apart. I'll go two there. I'm gonna put two there. I think that's about, I'd be a little too close. That's about appropriate distance apart, eight inches about each. And then what I do is personally at the end, that's when I bury them all. Cause that way I, I don't get lost along the way. Looks good. Hey, what are you putting over in that bed? More potatoes. We had some extra potatoes that we chitted that I wasn't able to fit in these back beds, so Jake made another potato bed. Made the beds out of logs that I'd found that loggers had cut down probably 30 years ago that the logs were still sitting there and the forest had just cut them up. Yeah, they look really nice. They have kind of cool character to them. And this soil for the potatoes is 50% native dirt, 50% compost. Because I've had more success growing potatoes in more earthy soil. And then made this long bed here for? Onions and garlic. We gotta plant this quick and get the heck out of here. I know. You want to work together and like fan me while I plant some of that I'll fan you while you plant some? <laughs> Thanks. You're welcome. Oh god. Okay.
just hop straight down on it. <clears throat> yes! Yep. Ah. Next. That's right, pods. Let's go. Whoa, what? The shadows across my face are crazy. <laughs> the sun is directly over the dome right now and it's just like beaming light on the island. It's insane. Okay, so I'm super hungry and I'm gonna make a quesadilla and it's gonna be like the best quesadilla ever. So I wanted to film so you guys can see how awesome this is gonna be. I'm really excited because I have everything to make it. And when you have like literally everything to make it, I think it's even better, like a sandwich. We have everything for a sandwich, you know, like an ultimate sandwich with tomatoes and lettuce and everything. So this quesadilla is gonna be delicious. I'm starving. This looks so nice. I think I made the best quesadillas ever. There's a lot of quesadillas. Yeah. I like it. Cool. It's weird how there's less bugs up on our deck and underneath the, the roofs. If I go up on top of the boat or up here, the oh, bugs don't come. Oh, there's sunlight too. Yeah. You think they get, like, they're really small. They probably get really hot. Okay, first bite. Come on. So good. <laughs> he looks comfortable.
I think that's pretty good. Maybe, yeah, right there. Don't move. Nice job. What do you think? I think it's good. I think it's ready for some wood. Got uh, all these used pallets for like airflow so that there's no rot in the bottom and I think we're ready. Cool. We've had wood cut and ready to go for months, kind of seasoning out, and now I don't want to have all this wood that we've cut get rained on again, so it's time to, we've had four dry days in a row, let's, let's uh, shelve it, stack it, <laughs> shed it. The first ones. Feel. Tired. Emotionally, physically, or sleepy? All of it. I say we go take a bath. Take a bath? Yeah. Okay. Or where are we taking a bath at? It's gonna be an Epsom salt semi cold dip bath. What's crazy is that it's 25, but if you go that way, there's still snow-capped mountains all around there. So funny, man. 
So even though it's warmer today, um, give us a little opinion of how cold the ocean is. I mean, it's cold. <laughs> feel it for us. I don't want to. If I feel it, then I'm not going to jump in. Oh my God. Okay. Are you doing an epic dive, a flip, or are you just going to like... I'm just going to like <laughs> scoot in and then get out. On a scale of one to 10, how badly do you want to jump in right now? Zero. <laughs> You're for real going to go in? Like maybe halfway. <laughs> Do it, man. Do it. <laughs> you know, somebody in the comments is going to say, what lake is that? Aww. Here, hold hands. <laughs> Here, count down with me. Say three, two, one, then we'll go. Count down with me. Ready? Three, two. <laughs> But I'm gonna be there with you. It's gonna feel good. And there's no wind, and there's no waves, and the sun is on us. It's perfect conditions. You're really overthinking it. You could do it. You already jumped in on New Year's Day. What was the difference between now and New Year's Day? Hold my hand. <clears throat> we got this. Do you want me to jump in and you jump into me? I don't know, babe. You gotta put your brain aside and just jump. Look at me, calm. If there was a bunch of your girlfriends here, you all would be jumping in. It's just because it's you and me. Only reason why it's in your head is because it's you and me. It's not gonna be that cold, I promise. The sun is baking us right now. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> <laughs> Did you even go in? Yeah, but how do you get out? <laughs> I got you. Come on up. You got it. Towel. Nice job. That was awesome. Was it less cold than you thought? Yeah. All right. Your goose bumpy all over. Oh well, yeah, it's chilly. <sighs> Thank you. Great job. I love you. Please don't leave me. Bye. Bye. I'm sure you'll make it one night. No way. You look cute standing there all by yourself. Here, I'll let them see what I see. Okay. Hello, Nicole. Hi. All right, let's see if they come in. Okay. Call him when he goes in, okay? Alright. Puma. Okay, Puma. Ready? Yep. Okay, Puma. Come on, Puma! Oh. Puma, come! Puma, come! He can swim! Puma, come! <laughs> Aww. You're doing so good. Good boy, Puma! Good boy, Puma! He did so good. <laughs> Come here, Puma. Good boy. So good. All right. To be honest, to this point, Puma's been the one who's been most interested in going into the ocean. So we'll see what Kai does. All right. Is All right. Come on, Kai. Come on, Kai. <laughs> Come on, Kai. Puma's gonna attack you. Come on, babes. There you go. Good boy, Kai. You did it. They can swim. <laughs> Woo! Now they have a nice little beach there. Check it out.
Hey everybody, today's project has got me a little nervous and uh, I try not to be nervous because I don't think it's conducive of being successful. So I try to kind of you know, be safe, be confident and also kind of own it. Um, this is gonna be the area we're gonna put the off-grid washroom and log cabin coming up, which kind of got derailed by the pandemic and Corona because we were going to have it all set up for guests, woofers, friends, family to come and just visit and uh, play a role here at Como Rebi. So everybody's canceled uh, since the pandemic. So we're gonna have other projects to do, but we have to get this off-grid washroom going next. And the off-grid washroom will be a combination of cob and log cabin style. So we're gonna chink in between the logs with cob and we're gonna have one wall of it be earthship style with bottles and cob. So if you guys subscribe, you'll see us build this really incredible structure that we're gonna to join to the yurt so that you can kind of walk between them safely even at night. We're going to build the log cabin with the logs that we're clearing for the structure itself. Right here, this is gonna be a hippie hot tub. We got this uh, hippie hot tub we're gonna put in, which is basically a galvanized water tank that's gonna be fed by rainwater and heated by wood stove. And we're gonna do all this this coming week. So if you're interested in seeing Nicole and I take a dip in our new hot tub fed by rainwater, heated by wood stove, then uh, that's the project coming up here. We have a beautiful view to look out at the mountains. But all these trees that you see above me, they are extremely densely planted because they're the babies of, you know, 100 years of logging. So it's way over planted and far too dense. And when the winters hit here, they hit like a hurricane and the wind is very scary. All winter long, Nicole and I thought for sure that we would be probably losing the yurt to a falling tree. And now that we're in the spring and the summer and the fall's coming, we got a little bit of a reprieve from hurricane style weather and wind. So we're trying to picture which trees are the most densely overplanted. If you guys are a gardener, you know, you go into your garden, you thin out certain plants. We're gonna thin out the trees, keep the ones that are not as close to the yurt that we don't think are a wind and a falling risk. And the ones that we down, we're gonna use for the upcoming structures. Okay, I hope you can see these trees behind me and then the yurt is right here. So they're incredibly close and it would have been best to have cleared these trees before we put the yurt up. But when we first got here, as you guys saw, we had nothing. We were living in the van, so we had to get a shelter up. So we cleared a few trees to make room for the yurt, but now we have these ones that are definitely a falling risk. So if I go in there and I chainsaw these trees, and I'm incorrect, they possibly could fall on the yurt and our home is destroyed. So for the past year, I've been training pretty hard on tree felling and I have been really accurate lately. I've been really practicing my, my craft and trying to cut the trees in a way where they fall exactly where I want them to fall. And I've, I've for the last few months, I'm like 20 for 20. I've hit my mark every time, but I got some backup stuff I wanna show you that's gonna ensure that we're successful. Um, famous last words, but you guys will watch the vlog here and you'll see if I'm successful or not. So let's go check out the hippie hot tub and check out the tools I have to make myself successful here. So that's the hot tub galvanized. Gonna go outside. It'll have a drainage hole and a cover and it's gonna have two pipes that go in that will use the power of science to heat the water from the wood stove. The heat of the wood stove will pull the water in and push the cold water out and it's upside down right now, but we're gonna put that in place of those trees behind the yurt. I can't even begin to tell you how much Nicole has wanted a bath every day, especially when we're working our butts off and I really wanna give that to her. So I'm gonna build this um, hippie outdoor hot tub and then we're gonna go for the off-grid washroom. There's just no road out there. So I can't just tie the, the rope to the truck and use the truck to pull the tree away from the yurt because it's just forest. So I'm gonna have to use these high weight pulleys 
tie a rope into the forest with the pulley, have the pulley shoot the other direction to the truck and hopefully the pulley will provide enough leverage that the truck can pull the tree the opposite direction. Uh, and even though I've done this already, with a, uh, a neighbor who has a homestead, you know, several miles away, we practiced a bit. It's still, it's Nicole's in my home. This yard is our home and I don't know what we'll do if this tree falls and crushes the yard.